everyone, Jason Ross here. Welcome to this edition of Jason's Journeys. On this week's adventure, we're heading to Southeast Asia to visit two tiny islands, the island of Cebu and the island of Bohol. Cebu is where the Spanish and Portuguese under Ferdinand Magellan planted the cross for Catholicism. The island of Bohol contains the world's smallest monkey and primate on earth, the Tarsier. You'll love it. It's a cute little animal about this big. We've got some great shots for you. In addition to that, we're going to go and see some of the beaches, visit the famous chocolate hills of Bohol, and basically get to know more about that part of the world. So come join me now with just myself and a handheld camera. It's off to Cebu and Bohol, everyone. Let's go. Cebu is a province in the Philippines consisting of Cebu Island and 167 surrounding islands. The main island of Cebu itself is a long narrow island stretching 225 kilometres from north to south, with the surrounding smaller islands including Mactan, Bantayan, Alongo and the Comodos Islands. Cebu itself is characterised by narrow coastlines, limestone plateaus and coastal plains. It has rolling hills and rugged mountain ranges which we'll see more of later on in the show. It traverses the northern and southern highlands and its highest mountain sits at over 1,000 metres high. Cebu is one of the most developed provinces in the Philippines with Cebu City as the main centre of commerce, trade and industry in the Visayas. Hi, here we are at Magellan's Cross. Magellan arrived here in 1521 and uh, he tried to bring Catholicism here to the Philippines, particularly the island of Cebu, which at the time was ruled by natives and tribal chiefs. It seemed to be going all okay until Magellan headed across to Mactan Island and met up with Chief Lapu Lapu. And after signing an agreement, he was betrayed and killed here. Rather than destroying Catholicism, the myth of Catholicism grew because there were no more Spanish here and they looked like aliens to the locals. So 44 years later, Legaspi arrived here from the Spanish, reconquered Cebu, and this time went about killing the locals rather than trying to make peace with them. But this is the original cross that Magellan planted in the ground when he originally arrived here back in 1521. Magellan's cross is a Christian cross planted by Portuguese and Spanish explorers as ordered by Ferdinand Magellan upon arriving in Cebu in 1521. The cross is the symbol of Cebu and the chapel's image can be found in its city seal. It is also the symbol of Roman Catholicism in the Philippines. In April 1521, Portuguese explorer Ferdinand Magellan, in the service of King Charles of Spain, arrived in Cebu during his voyage to find a westward route to the Indies. Magellan presented the Santo Niño to the newly baptised Queen Juana as a symbol of the alliance between the Spanish and the local peoples. To her husband Carlos, Magellan presented the bust of the Eke Homo, the depiction of Christ before Pontius Pilate. He gave an image of Our Lady to the natives who were later baptised with their rulers. However, Magellan died later in 1521 in a battle that took place in Mactan Island with Chief Lapu Lapu. Chief Lapu Lapu of Mactown Island's battle with Magellan and his ultimate death didn't actually achieve the outcome he hoped. Instead it created an air of awe and mystery around the Spanish. So it was some 44 years later that Lopez de Legaspi returned sailing the Pacific Ocean on behalf of the Spanish for some 93 days and arriving in 1565. 
Gatsby took a more aggressive approach to the locals and arrived in 1565 attacking the village of Raja Tupas which led to the surrender of all the local settlements. There the Spanish established a colony making it their Villa de Santissimo Nombre de Jesus. From that point on he sent his men back to Spain to report on his progress. He remained in Cebu and did not accompany his men during the colonisation of Manila due to health problems and advancing age. Fort San Pedro was a military defence structure built by Legaspi in Cebu. The fort was triangular in shape and two sides of it faced the sea with the third side facing the land. The two sides facing the sea were defended with artillery while the front had a strong palisade made of wood. So here we are at Fort San Pedro. As I mentioned before, Magellan's first expedition here well, he brought Catholicism, but he also brought upon his own death with Lapu Lapu at Mactan Island. So when Legaspi arrived here, he thought, I'm not going to be a victim of the same thing. So 44 years later, when he arrived, he built this massive fort as a way of protecting the Spaniards who arrived and making sure that he didn't befall the same fate that Ferdinand had before him, uh, Magellan. Anyway, so we have some cannons, we have very strong built uh, fortifications. We have the original wells from when they were here, and just as importantly, we have a blind guitarist who gives free massage, which is something that you'll only find in the Philippines, these bizarre people that you meet in this country. But anyway. Okay, so Legaspi, as we mentioned, he built this fort. And once he got the fort up and running, he made sure that he had enough soldiers to defeat anyone that caused him problems. So they had their own fresh water supply, like the well we saw downstairs. It was built very solidly. They had many quarters for people to sleep in. But more importantly, it was the approach Legaspi took, which was he decided not to negotiate that well with the locals. He decided instead to take them head on and eliminate all the competition. So that's what he did. And five years after he arrived, he wiped out most of the locals, taken control of the island. And from that point on, Cebu, and for that fact, the rest of the Philippines fell under Spanish occupation, an occupation that lasted some three to 400 years afterwards. So the fort must have worked pretty well. Coming up after the break, we head across to the island of Bahol, where we see the chocolate hills, gigantic mahogany forests, and we go and see the cutest animal I've ever seen, the Tarsier, the world's smallest primate. You can't miss that. See you after the break, everyone. Yeah.